It's like Suicide Knife. It's like just put Dude, that two. sounds like an awesome name for a metal band. Are you kidding me? Forget like StarCraft names. <laughs> That's like a good 80s like heavy metal Suicide Knife. Oops. All right, there we I go. Should... So, real That's... quick, guys, update. The score will always be displayed here in the lower left next to the mini map. So if you take off, if you AFK, it's a best of five. There's plenty of games still to be had. You can come back and check it down there. But uh, currently, down one at the moment, spawning in the lower left. It's going to be the red Protoss player, RSVP. And sticking with his manly pink colors in the top right corner of Texas, it's going to be Deathblood. So it's worth noting, guys, this is the Starbo Cup ladder number or ladder cup number two. The first one and the second one have had a requirement where you got to have a certain amount of ladder points. Hey, what's that website where you can check out the ladder? It's StarboMod.com. Uh, Thank you for yeah. asking. That's called a plug, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, <laughs> the point is they needed a certain amount of points to play. If you want to play in these future cups, go start laddering right now. Get those points up, and maybe you can participate in the next ladder cup. As pointed out by Zephius earlier, there's actually going to be an eventual cup with some prize pools, maybe some additional things. We don't know what's been announced yet or what's going to be announced. But the thing is, this is all not for naught. Like, these guys aren't just here for the sake of it. It actually adds a lot of competition to the atmosphere, which this sounds like such a silly cop-out thing to say, but I guarantee you, because they've said it before in interviews, and they'll say it again, players like Snoot, Teffel, I mean, they compete in weekly tournaments for like ESL and Zotac, not because there's a $100 prize pool, but because it's the most competitive environment for some of the best practice you can get. And that's not at all different here in Starbo. Well, I think my hotkeys just broke. Sorry, I just <laughs> blizzard. I, I, I can't pan anymore. Okay, sorry about that. You can just put your uh, camera on me if you need to. Oh, yeah, I can do that. But uh, the That's other true. thing too, guys, I want to point out again. We talked about it before. I'll say it again, and we're gonna say it every time we're in this, in the hopes that you guys actually go and play. Starbo is free to play. You do not have to drop 20 bucks on Wings of Labor. You don't have to drop 40 bucks on Heart of the Swarm. You can pick it up for free and play because it's done through the Blizzard Arcade, and you can play the arcade 100% for free with the starter edition of StarCraft 2. So if you like what you see today, if you kind of enjoy it, if you got that Brood War nostalgia, whatever it is that drives you. Go pick it up and give Starbo a try. I've played it a little bit myself. I've enjoyed it every time I have, even though I think I've got pretty much like an 0-10 loss record going. <laughs> but still, it's fun. It's enjoyable. It's it's a it's at the very least a, like a breath of fresh air compared to regular StarCraft 2. If you're having trouble getting the ladder working, uh, Jack Attack, aka StarCraft 2 Tutorial Center, did a instruction video which is really good, and that should be linked in the how to set up the ladder on the website as well, though. But cool. uh, so that has helped some people who had trouble getting things working to, to get it working now. Well, when he's giving chase to the probe, not at all unfamiliar, but RSVP actually sneaking went out successfully this time from his natural base instead of kind of like as a haphazard panic move. Ooh, but, oh, and Deathblood sending the next two links in the wrong direction, so he's not going to be able to spot the second probe incoming. We see a quite a normal opening from RSVP with a Forge Fast Expand. I saw Tasteless actually playing a lot of Starbo, and he tried to make like one base old school uh, Protoss work, and not too successful in it, but there might be some builds out there that could. Oh, he goes down right outside First of his base! <laughs> Poor little probe. Poor little oh, probe. So gonna check for third bases first and then it's probably gonna yeah there's nothing there RSVP and then it's gonna see if if there's another hydro busting coming it's I think it's kind of too early to tell what well he'll be able to see the spawning pool actually researching metabolic boost which is gonna be key because if you go for those hydro busts you really don't invest into your circlings much of it all and if he's looking he'll see the pool researching it's jiggling and wiggling that's right, you got the jiggling motion with research. Actually, uh, Deathblood is doing something that's a little bit interesting too, so I want to talk about that for a second. He he, he's, he had most of his uh, drones on his main base, and then he just uh, rallied them to his natural. In Starboy, you actually want to transfer drones, because if you have any more than eight, then the next ones are not going to be as effective as the first eight. So you want to make sure you have an equal number of drones for both bases at all times. Yeah, diminishing returns are weird for mining in Starbo because, like, innately, the, you mine a lot better, so you would think, like, more drones is more power, but uh, it does become a little bit more ineffective. And I guess to explain a little bit further uh, for those who are unfamiliar with Starbo, you can basically consider the mining rates in Starbo kind of akin to that of gold mineral patches in StarCraft. So you need a lot less workers to get the same economy you normally would want to have. Same goes for the gas mining. It's eight per trip instead of three. That is indeed true. One thing to note, though, that I think not too many people know is that oh. the actual... Hang on. Oh. Big Ling Run by gets past the oh, cannon wow. into the mineral lines. Deathblood! Oh, man, where was the whole position on Zella for RSVP? A small mistake was made, and that's going to cost him probably a couple workers here. Actually, you got to be careful dancing around that cannon. Oh, he's, he's Ooh, working Deathblood on a little bit too close and just I, losing all the Zerglings. That's I, too bad. After he got those in, I really feel like if he was going to fight a Zealot, 
Like, don't. Just go to the main instead. Take out those probes. Like, use your metabolic boost to your advantage and run away from the slow-moving zealots. Yeah, I agree. That was kind of a mistake, but it's it's a common mistake. I, when I play Serg, I, I do that a lot. I was like, oh, I have all my links here. I can do whatever I want. And then you just aim move and try and kill as much as possible. And yeah, but he's actually going to transfuse out an early, early Spire. Yeah, Nurturing Swarm is a funny mechanic. It's the one thing that isn't uh, from the Queen of regular StarCraft guys. What this does is it not only heals, but it also allows bellies to build faster. Kind of like a, almost a Chrono Boost, I guess, in that regard. Yeah, it's like a transfuse plus Chrono Boost. So it's it's very interesting. I, I, I forget that we call it Nurturing Swarm because we just called it Transfuse for the longest time and just had the well, extra Why not just call it Transfuse then? Man, because I spent so long trying not to call it Transfuse. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? Hey, I didn't change everything in Star Wars. Go watch my first like three ESL broadcasts. Every time I'm like transfuse, or er, I mean nurturing swarm. And now I finally got into nurturing swarm, and you're telling me you don't even call it transfuse? You, the game developers? Oh, anger, uh, words. <laughs> Apparently, he's making a Hydra then and a Spire. He just wants to have all options Whoa. open, but I really think it's going to be the Mutalist. Hold yeah, on, hold on, hold on. We got we got charge lots on the way to his base, and there's actually almost no army value here. Just a couple of queens to defend and. Well, queens, when they enrage, they certainly hit harder. They're not going to make up for a lack of zerglings. They're not going to make up for a lack of anything. There's six they don't have the any way, but... energy to enrage either. He's got oh, nothing. God. Spine card is going to go down. These zealots should go get some worker kills. I mean, the mutals are going to pop, but even then, the mutalisks will not clean up these zealots very fast. Worker kills are guaranteed at this point. This is kind of like Roaches versus Void Race in early game in Heart of the Swarm, where the Roaches will probably kill something, but they will eventually yeah, die exactly. because they can't shoot air. You know what? That's Kissing. a great analogy. I give you a, like an internet high five. Thank you. Oh, I guess the queen too. Oh, really nice oh, pick up with the queen. A couple hydros that spawn out too. In the meantime, though, he's going for the plus one attack and three stalkers because he sees the mutalisks now. So he's getting some valuable intel information as well. But he's actually also getting a lurker. And I don't know if RCP is paying attention to that because that means Despot can go for a super quick tech switch if he wants to. He may not have I guess seen stalkers... that initially, though. I mean, that's he saw the lurker down, but I mean, it's in an awkward spot, so he may not have actually like seen it, seen it, even though he saw it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. He got like eight workers killed too, so ah, uh, that's it's kind of uh, unfortunate. So Deathblood really has to do some damage with his mutalist now, and he's not doesn't have that many, and I think he's tech switching maybe a little bit too early as well. You want to get a healthy group of mutalists out. Ooh, two archons incoming. That's going to be very difficult to deal with. Yeah, especially if uh, he can actually connect to the mutalist, but. Uh, might actually pick off one of them before they quite finish. Nice blast from it, combined with the stalker fire. Oh my god, with barely any shields left, it does get away. And the Mutalists are thwarted off actually very nicely here by RSVP. Man, I'm just sitting here clenching my teeth like, no, don't, don't take hits from our I'm, I'm, I'm clenching something else, my friend. <laughs> 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 okay, lots of Blink Stalkers are out to give me great at dealing with the Mutalist, but the problem is, as we saw before, guys, Blink Stalkers kind of limit on their usage the later they get in the game. But, just like any unit in StarCraft, or Starbow, or Hell Brood War, if you have enough of them, if you can overwhelm your opponent, you're certainly going to have that really nice snowball effect come into play. But, I mean, was this two Mutalists? This is not a threat. This is I mean, a they, soon have, they soon have plus one. <laughs> but yeah, that's not going to help much. In the meantime, RCP is moving out of a considerable, considerable force to try and deal with the third base of Deathblood, and he's got a lot of lurkers incoming, and if they can get into a good position, they can at least stop RCP from going any further. I don't think they can save this base, though. Oh, maybe. RCP has no detection. Uh, I kind of feel like he can still knock the base down, though, if he left the Zealots there and just forced the yeah. Lurkers to chase and fight the Stalkers. I mean, every time he unburrows the move, it risks the Lurkers. You can, oh, actually, update, you don't know about this, I forgot to tell you, you can actually stack Lurkers on top of each other now. Oh, okay, because I know that was something specifically I tried doing when I first played Starbo. Because that was the, like my favorite thing to do, where you'd stack like eight Lurkers on top of each other, and like wait for the Marines to finally walk on top, then unleash hell. I was kind of curious if RCP was going to turn around there or not when he saw those stalkers. I really like Deathblood's choice there of splitting up his stalkers and try to, I mean, ugh, lurkers, and try to defend two places at once. Uh, but I think RCP could have just blinked over those stalkers. But, you know, it's so hard to know how many there are and what's behind them. So it's always a risk to do something like that. Yeah, that's the problem too. Like when you don't have observers on the map, you don't have all that free vision. It's not necessarily just about the detection for the burrowed units, but it's being able to see beyond them and see what's waiting behind the enemy lines. So oh. really unfortunate that he's only just now getting observers out because I kind of feel like RSVP had this really nice advantage, but he didn't know that he could press it. I think he's getting it back though now because he's making the perfect counter to this. He's getting dragoons, he's getting observers, he's getting high templars with storm. Dragoons do very well versus uh, versus uh, lurkers if you can see them, of course. 
that's kind of the big if though. I do like this yeah. composition though out of RSVP though. He's got a little bit of everything and he's also spread out really nicely on the map. And I mean, Texas, it looks really big and open, but realistically there's so many ramps and chokes it actually makes the map a little more funneled than it initially looks. Texas has a really interesting map story too because this map was actually originally created for StarCraft 2. It was like a new and interesting concept for Mirel, and it was actually never finished when Mirel announced that he was going to stop map making. But so we just finished it because we found it and it worked perfectly for Starbo. Cool. He actually did some actual finished job later himself when we started using it though. I like this attack from RSVP that's going to set up to hit the left, but it's not going to be enough to deal with the spine crawlers and the lurkers, unfortunately. He is going to get at this really scary death ball stage. I mean, the reality is, guys, it's 90 army supply to 44. I don't care how good lurkers are. If you get <laughs> overwhelmed, you're getting overwhelmed. Just bottom line. Yeah, Death Blood is definitely fighting from behind there. That, that, those early Zealots did a lot of damage. His Mutalist did not. I feel he should have stuck with Mutalist a little bit longer. He got a stronger group, but here we go. Big attack. RSVP is going to commit to this. Stalkers take forever to kill a Lurker, holy crap, that's like 80 shots. <laughs> but still moving forward here on the advance, he blinks forward rather aggressively. Has to be careful, there are some spine crawlers. But like I said before, it doesn't matter. He's not even controlling the army to the best of his capabilities. The Archons aren't even on the front lines, but that doesn't matter. Because he's got enough units, and looks like RSVP is looking to tie this series up in his best of five. Drones have been pulled, and that's always a sign of desperation, whether it's StarCraft 2, Starbow, or Brood War. But this is, uh, yeah. this is looking pretty grim. Definitely, it's crushing through the defenses quite easily here, and I don't really know what Deathblade can do from this point to come back. He's already was behind so much. RSVP did lose a big chunk of his army there, but quite a lot remaining, and there's a huge reinforcement surge of Celots incoming, so there we go, GG. 